Welcome back to my channel. The upcoming Sunday is Zhongyuan Jie, or the Chinese Halloween or Ghost Day. The tradition of sacrificing to ghosts on this day originated from the ancestor sacrifice of the Zhou kings. They made offers of the newly harvested grains to their ancestors called the Qiu Chang or the Autumn Taste. This tradition is recorded in the Confucian text Li Ji or the Book of Rites and the Chun Qiu Fan Lu, the luxury and the germ of the spring and autumn. The Taoist religion believes that because this day is the time when the yin energy starts growing, all ghosts, which consist very strong yin energy, are released from the underworld. According to the Taoist religion, from the midnight of the 14th of lunar July to the midnight of the 15th of lunar July, the gates from the underworld are open to the human world and all sorts of ghosts, spirits, and demons, etc., are allowed to roam the human world freely, especially during the night time to take offering from the living. So the Taoist priest will organize a feast for all the ghosts, especially those who have no descendant to make offerings to them. We Chinese believe that the hungry ghosts are quite dangerous. I think other Asian countries also have similar beliefs. If you're from Asia, please tell me what are the rituals to pacify the hungry ghosts in your culture. I would love to know. The Buddhists also hold a ritual called the Yu Lan Pen Fa Hui on this day. The Buddhist monks will make a food offering for the hungry ghosts chanting prayers for the ghosts so that they can be released from the Buddha's house and be reincarnated to a new life, etc. There are a lot of taboos around this day. If you were born in Lunar July, you might be vulnerable to be possessed by a ghost or an evil spirit. You need to take extra care, such as not venturing out during night time. If you have to go out tomorrow night after midnight or Sunday night, watch out, you might see something. You might need to be very, very careful around the water because the ghost in the water might drag you down into the water. The ghost can appear in many different forms. Here are part of a Japanese scroll of the nightly march of a hundred ghosts from the 14th to the 16th centuries. So, to join the activity of this special day, I'm going to introduce a very unique poet from the Tang Dynasty named Li He and translate a poem by him recounting one of his encounters with a ghost poet. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher obsessed with poetry. I make videos about the classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and traditional Chinese medicine. Please click the like button and subscribe my channel. Your support is very important to me. You can also make a small donation to support me. I also offer online lessons on these subjects. So, if you would like to have personally tailored lessons or read the original Chinese text with me, please contact me. Here is my email address. Now, back to Li He. He was from a distant branch of the royal clan. By the time he was born in 890 CE, the relation between his family and the royal family was rather distant, but he was very proud of his royal heritage. When he turned 21, Li He got a job at the court as an official responsible for rituals. Unfortunately, he had to quit his job two years later due to illness. It was said that he was a sickly boy since he was born and he was very thin. He had a unibrow and very long fingernails. 
Here is a contemporary drawing of him trying to capture this image. Li He took another job in 814, working for a governor named Xi Shimei in Shanxi province. Three years later, when Governor Xi Shimei retired from his post, Li He lost his job and returned to his hometown and died later that year at the age of 26. Li He was known for his poetic talent and quick wit when he was very young. It was said that he traveled to the capital at 15 and quickly built a reputation for himself as a poet. The then leading literary figure named Han Yu and his disciple Huang Fu Shi singled out Li He and asked him to compose a poem which he subsequently composed with ease. It is a pity that he died so young, but still he managed to leave 263 poems and aces for us. Li He had an extremely unique poetic style that set him apart from most of the poets of his time. For whatever reason, he was obsessed with death and imageries related to death, such as grave, ghost, demon, spirit, and all sorts of supernatural phenomena and entities. I would even argue that he was the Chinese version of Charles Baudelaire, the French poet who was known for poetry about death, decay, and other things that gave rise to a dark melancholy. There are some striking similarities between the two poets, although they are certainly very different in many other aspects. Given the fact that Li He lived about a thousand years earlier than Baudelaire in a completely different historical and cultural environment. Chinese people usually place a lot of taboo around death and its related phenomena. Many Chinese even avoid a word that sounds like death. For instance, number four reads the same as death or shi. Hence, it's regarded as an unlucky number. In some buildings, you won't find levels 4, 14, 24, etc. This just makes Li He more unusual. After this video, I'll present more of Li He's poem so that you can compare his poems with other poems I have presented so far. You should be able to see how different Li He was from all the other poets. Now, let me read today's poem. The title of the poem is Qiu Lai, or The Arrival of Autumn. Tong feng jing xin zhuang shi ku, shuai deng luo wei ti han shu. Shui kan qing dian yi bian shu, bu tian hua chong fen kong du. 诗前今夜长英子, now let's look at the first two couplets. 同风惊心壮士苦, Tong refers to parasol tree. Feng means wind. Jing means subtle. Xin means heart and mind. David and I think it's better to translate this poem from the first person perspective. So we render xin as referring to the poet's heart. Zhuang shi literally means a courageous warrior. It is used as a self-reference here. So we translate it as me. Ku literally means bitterness or hardship. Here it refers to the hard work the poet put into his poem. Shui is an adjective describing the declining state of something, as in the phrase of shui lao or aging. Since it is used to describe the dimming lamplight here, 
Daphne and I translate it as dingly. Deng means lamplight. Luowei refers to cicada because the noise it makes with its wings sounds like the noise from a silk waving loom. Cicada is a summer insect. It usually dies when the autumn arrives. Ti means cry. Han means chill. Shu refers to plain silk. Here the poet is making a pun by connecting the cicada with waving silk. The imagery of the cicada crying in the autumn chill over unfinished silk symbolizes the poet who is tormented by the thought that he might die before he was able to complete his work, just like the cicada, before it finishes waving the silk. Shui means hu, kan means to look. It can also mean to read, as in the phrase of kan shu, or reading books. Qing means brain. Jian means bamboo strip. Yi means one. Bian means string together. Shu means book. Yi bian shu refer to a scroll made of bamboo strip strung together. Here is what it looked like. This is a bamboo book of Shan Zhi Jing or the three character classic I bought years ago at the Confucius Temple in Beijing. Such a book can be quite durable. That is why we find many bamboo strips in ancient tombs. Some of them go back to the Roaring State period nearly 3,000 years ago. Bu means not, qian means to let. Bu qian means not allow. David and I think that a positive statement is better than a negative one. So we translate bu qian as rescue. Hua means flower. Chong means worm. Fen means dust. Kong means cavity. Du refers to the act of bookworm chewing up the book. So these two couplets can be translated as the wind in the parasol trees startles me, hard at work on a poem. By my dwindling lamp light, cicadas cry at their chill silk. Who will read this steel grain bamboo scroll? Rescue it from worms, reducing it to dust. Shi qian jin ye chang ying zi, yu leng xiang hun diao shu ke. 秋坟鬼唱报家事,恨雪千年土中壁. 诗 means thought. 千 literally means to pull or hold something. For instance, 千手 means to hold hands. It is also extended to mean being concerned or worried about something, as in the phrase of 牵挂. Qian here is used to describe the torment the poet was experiencing when he thought about what would happen to his poetry when he died. Jin ye means tonight. Chang literally means the god. Ying means should. Zhi means strike. Chang ying zhi literally means to pull the god straight. This phrase is related to a popular Chinese saying, Duan Chang. I have posted a video clip about the story behind this phrase. Here is the link. Duan Chang, or broken God, is a common imagery used to describe the strong emotion of heartbreaking. Many poets from the Tang Dynasty use the phrase of Duan Chang to describe the feeling of heartbreaking. By twisting this common phrase for heartbreaking, Li He used a rather unusual imagery of pulling the gut straight to focus on the tormenting process of heartbreaking. 
This imagery is just too gory to even imagine. Yu means rain, lang means cold, xiang means fragrant. This character can also mean virtuous. This connotation can be traced back to a poet from Warring State period named Qi Yuan, who started the trend of using fragrant flowers and beauty to represent virtuous and loyal officials. Huan means the spirit or soul of a dead person. So Xiang Huan here refers to a virtuous dead person. Since the following line says that this ghost led our poet to his grave where he started chanting poems by a famous poet, David and I decided this visiting ghost was once a poet. Diao literally means to Han as in the phrase of Sang Diao or Han oneself. It also means to visit or condole the family who just lost a loved member as in the phrase of Diao Yan or to condole. It is rather interesting that Li He used this word to describe the visit of a ghost. There is still the belief that many Chinese today that a dying person can see ghosts, especially the dead who used to be close to him or her. It is a belief shared by many cultures. By using this character, Li He indicated that he knew he was dying, and he wanted to finish his poems before he died. Shu literally means to write. Ke means guest. Here it is used as a self-reference because the Taoist belief that human beings are just guests passing through this world for a brief moment. So Shu Ke here is a self-reference indicating the poet was writing down his poems. Qiu means autumn. Fen means grave, Gui means ghost, Chang means chant. Bao Jia refers to a poet from 5th century CE named Bao Zhang. He was known to be a loyal official and the best poet of his time. Bao Zhao composed many poems lamenting his regrets of wasting his time to serve the many evil rulers. He died a violent death in 466 CE in a battle between two princes of the Southern Kingdom. He was also one of Li Bai's favorite poets. Shi means poem. Hen means resentful. Xue means blood. Qian means a thousand, Nian means year, Tu means earth, Zhong means inside, Tu Zhong means in the earth, Bi refers to green jade. This line refers to a story of a loyal official named Chang Hong from the spring autumn period who served King Ji Gan. He protected Ji Gai when he was just one of the Zhou princes and supported him through difficult times to become the Zhou king. He was appointed as a high-ranked official at the Zhou court in charge of the astronomy department and all the rituals for the Zhou court. Confucius visited him to learn about rites and music in 518 BCE and regarded him as one of his masters. There are many versions how Chang Hong died. Some historical records said that he was executed by the king. Others claimed that he was killed by a general from the Jin state. According to legend, after Chang Hong was killed, his blood spilled everywhere. People of Shu, angered by the injustice and feeling sympathy for him, collected all his blood in a box and buried it in the ground. 
Three years later, they find that his blood turned into a green jade. This story gives rise to many fixed phrases, such as Chang Hong Hua Bi, or Chang Hong's blood turned into green jade. Xue Hua Wei Bi, or blood turns into green jade. Shan Nian Hua Bi, turning into green jade in three years, etc. So Li He invoked this story to say that their resentful emotions are so strong that their blood will consolidate into green jade too. So these two couplets can be translated as This night souls will straighten my heart. The cold rain visits a fragrant ghost upon me. By the autumn tunes, it chants a poem of Bao Zhao, resentful blood that in a thousand years will tend to jade. The very first couplet of this poem presents a chilling picture. The strong autumn wind blows through the parasol trees, startling the dying poet, who was still working hard on his unfinished poetry, while the last of the cicadas struggling to finish is waving desperately. The parallel between the dying poet and the cicadas symbolizes the striking similar face between them. The following couplet made the situation even more heartbreaking. Our poet was not even sure that anyone would actually read his poetry before his bamboo scroll poems was chilled up by the bookworm. It is in the third couplet, Li He described his encounter with a ghost poet. As he was tormented by the thoughts that his poetry might never be appreciated by anyone, a ghost poet visited him. I have to say, Li He will be a wonderful film director if he lives today. He created such a chilly atmosphere for the ghost poet to appear. The dimming lamplight, the whistling wind through the trees, and the cold autumn rain with which the ghost showed up. It just sent chills down my spine. Just imagine this scene. The last couplet is the climax of the whole poem. Now reality is blurred into dream. I think it is probably a scene from his dream. Given the fact that he was dying, it's highly unlikely he would venture out to a graveyard in the middle of a cold rainy night. So he was probably describing a scene from a dream that a ghost visited him. And the ghost led him to his grave and started chanting the poems of another dead poet, Bao Zhao. The anger and the resentment of our poet and the two dead poets are so strong that their blood will last for a thousand years and turn into a green jade. We Chinese believe that people died of violent death will turn into angry ghosts. And angry ghosts are extremely dangerous to human beings. So I believe that Li He was saying that he might wind his anger one day with all the other poets who died of a violent death. The whole poem reads like a horror movie that stimulates our every sensory faculty, such as the cold rainy night with a chilly wind, the sound of dying cicadas, the dark, almost gothic imageries of a dying poet, the bookworms chewing up the bamboo scrolls, angry ghost poets chanting poems at the graveyard, and their blood turning into a green jade because of the injustice and the violent death they suffered. 
We Chinese believe that angry girls will not be pacified until they have their revenge. I have no idea why Li He was so angry. Maybe he was frustrated that his talent was not appreciated. Maybe he was angry that he had to die so young at the age of twenty-six. Oh, maybe he was just angry at everything like many young men today. What do you think? I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher obsessed with poetry. I make videos about the classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and traditional Chinese medicine. Please click the like button and subscribe my channel. Your support is very important to me. If you would like to make a small donation to my channel, that would be highly appreciated. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. If you would like to have personally tailored lessons on these subjects or read the original Chinese text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time.